It's been a while. Chelsea have got me down in the dumps. Look, Pochettino obviously got sacked and the whole shortlist came out about who Chelsea were going to hire. And it looks like we're going to end up with a manager from the championship. And look, first things first, you know I wasn't Pochettino's biggest fan. And I'm glad he's not at Chelsea Football Club anymore. But I feel like this has raised even more concerns for me than I ever thought it would when I thought about Pochettino's departure. I felt like the board had learned their lesson. I felt like Graham Potter and Frank Lampard were enough of an experiment to see that going for someone with not much experience and someone who's up and coming with fresh ideas might not be the best move forwards. Because as Chelsea Football Club go, that's not really something we're renowned for. But we've had a lot of success without it. We haven't had to copy other clubs. A lot of clubs have tried to copy us. Yes, the football and the styles haven't been sustainable. And obviously, that's this board want that and more. And they want a young manager with fresh ideas to come in who sort of imitates a Pep Guardiola, if you like. And that's the concern I've got. Because Chelsea Football Club has absolutely lost its identity. The owners scare me. I'm not sure what they're capable of. I felt like this was a stepping stone. I felt like if Pochettino left, which felt inevitable to me at any point within the next two to three seasons, he would give us stability and bring us back up to a level. Which if you look at last season, he's gone from 12th to 6th, albeit the long way round with a lot of mistakes and failure to win trophies and be a bit of a nearly man and have a lot of sort of injuries and issues with the squad, and you name it, he ended up doing an okay job. And everything felt like there was a bit of cohesion between everyone. The board, the players, the, even, even the sporting directors, Pochettino, and the fans. Everyone, by the end of the season, albeit the, the performances still weren't brilliant, we were getting results. And, and what you need is results to start building and implementing a style. And I always felt like that if we got that and we showed evidence that we are progressing and playing in a better way, that potentially he'd deserve a little bit more time. When we finished the season with potential Europa League football, I felt okay about it. I probably would have even accepted Conference League if that's what we'd finished with. And now we've got that. I think it was the bare minimum, to be honest with you. But I had to see a bit of proof. And finally, Pochettino showed that to me. And then, for for reasons that I think weren't results-based, Pochettino has left his post. Whether he was sacked, whether he was asked to leave, whether it was completely his choice and he walked, it disrupted what I felt like was a much-needed stability under this new ownership that have created a huge amount of instability, if that's even the right word to use. It just feels very unstable at Chelsea Football Club right now. It feels extremely volatile, like the crypto markets Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital are involved in. You know, this is a mess and this is a huge, huge risk. And I get it. They are risk takers because Egbali, Todd Bowley, whoever it is, they wouldn't be as successful as they are in their personal lives and their business empires without taking risks. And these risks have to pay off. They've done it since they got to Chelsea. They've done it with the contracts. They've taken risks in terms of how much we could spend, how close to the line they could get, finding loopholes. They've done it. They've identified and tried to find areas where they can gamble to potentially get ahead of the curve and the opposition. The problem is, though, the blueprint was already there for Chelsea to have success, and they didn't agree with it and wanted to rip it up and make it their own style, which seems strange to me as to why you would buy a football club with such a strongly ingrained format of winning, right? Go for a club that hasn't and change the structure. No, I'm not sure. They probably didn't realise what, what they were getting themselves into. Anyway, it's reminded me of how volatile and how crazy at times it's felt under this ownership. You know, for a period of time, when Pochettino could have got sacked at different periods of the season, they seem to remain patient. And then we get to the end of the season, it all just goes up into the air again. Just give me a summer where I know what to expect the coming season. Now, we're obviously going to hire Maresca, it seems like. I've been kind of sitting on it, being a bit quiet, because 
nothing's been officially announced by the club and there's been so much chatter on Twitter and everything. And at the time when he was sat, there were so many names flying about. It all just gets a bit silly, to be honest with you, because I'll be honest, some of these journalists are honestly making stuff up for interaction on social media. That is it. And, and I just get fed up with it. I don't want to hear all these names. And then you start delving into the players or the managers that are potentially on this shortlist. And Maresca was one that, albeit I didn't know much, I, I can't say I knew a lot about most of them, which worries me because as a Chelsea fan and where we are as a club and where our standards should be, we shouldn't be hiring a manager that I know nothing about because I'd, I'd back my football knowledge. And if I don't know some of these managers, it means they are playing at a level, managing at a level below where I've been looking because they, they don't really appeal to me as people that I think would be the right fit for the job. I'm hoping he is. I really am because I'm so done with this board getting stuff wrong. I hope it's taken them a few times and they've got this one right. Because the issue is, and we'll get to this, but under Abramovich, no matter how much we chopped and changed, the squad was pretty much the same. The club and the background and everyone who worked for the club was pretty much the same. The owner and the direction of the club was pretty much the same. They also then gave the manager that they employed the absolute best conditions to succeed. I don't think it's fair to say that about what Todd Bowley, Clear Lake Capital, Egg Barley have provided towards their managers and the club itself. I think it's completely lacked stability and some kind of vision. And there's been an awful lot of mistakes and learning, hopefully learning, because I haven't seen enough evidence yet to suggest that they are moving Chelsea Football Club in the right direction. However, appointing a manager from a championship side probably doesn't fill me with the most confidence that a couple of other managerial appointments might have done. Now, people will say, oh, who did you want in then? What well, You must have known someone exactly. I'm not being funny, but the list there, there was probably three or four managers that I would say are potentially comparable to Pochettino and slightly above. I think there are winners there, but I don't think they had any inter interest really in coming to Chelsea at the same time because of how volatile the situation looked. Our club doesn't look appealing to a manager of Pochettino's standard because even Poch got sacked when most people seem to think he did an okay job with with the conditions he was working under. So I'm 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 kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because I genuinely don't know how this is going to go. I can't sit here and tell you what I fully expect next season. Maybe off of the back of pre-season I can. What I don't want to do, though, and what I think will be a massive, massive mistake if it happens, is go backwards and not progress from this season. If Chelsea Football Club m start to go backwards from where we've left off this season, I absolutely think it's a step in the wrong direction because we were moving forward as a football club. Whether you like it or not, from Graham Potter to Poch, there was an improvement. From Lampard to Poch, there was an improvement because we finished sixth. And albeit sometimes Poch got stuff wrong. Yes. And I know you can do better than Pochettino. Would you say Maresca is better than Pochettino right now? That's tough. I really don't know. He's inexperienced. He's won a league with a very strong team where no one he played against was better than his side. And that's not going to be the same in the Premier League. He's going to have issues. I've spoken to a few Leicester fans. They weren't over the moon with him at times. They got impatient with his type of football. And he called them out and said he'll leave if they don't like his type of football. We're talking about someone here who comes across as potentially quite outspoken. And we know how that kind of looks like, with, especially with these sporting directors. It, it doesn't really seem to sit that well. I just hope somewhere... Paul Witt, Stanley and Lawrence Stewart have absolutely conveyed the message a lot clearer this time than they did to Pochettino. Because the whole thing is, is that they've someone somewhere has misread or misinterpreted what the whole idea was behind Chelsea Football Club, that Pochettino wouldn't have an input on outgoings, ingoings, and that would ultimately lead to the breakdown of a relationship between the two parties. Why wasn't that communicated in the first place? For me, the biggest amount of pressure here going into next season isn't on Maresca. For me, it should be on 
Lawrence Stewart and Paul Witt Stanley. Because if they get this wrong, it is absolutely 100% on them. They are the people that have been in charge of the hiring process, as we're led to believe off of these journalists. And if not, then it goes to Egg Barley because they're appointing a manager that could potentially be out of his depth, that could potentially be Graham Potter 2.0. I really hope he isn't. And if you listen to the players and the reports of what's coming out from this, that a lot of people have good things to say about this guy. And I obviously saw Leicester play against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in the FA Cup. And at periods in that game, Leicester were out playing Chelsea. And they impressed me, actually. And considering the Leicester that we played the season before, there was an improvement, even if they were in the championship. So maybe there is a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel with Maresca that he could be an improvement. He may be able to implement his ideas quicker than what Pochettino did. He may be able to understand what his players are. I feel like Poch never got to grip and misprofiled so many different players that it become a real issue. And he really didn't know how to set up his team. He didn't know his best 11. He didn't know the best way for this Chelsea side to play. The only players I feel like he really understood were Conor Gallagher and a striker in Nicholas Jackson because ultimately he got he got seasons out of them that are better than they've ever had before, really. And other than that, I feel like he really didn't identify too well with others, even though towards the end of the season, we definitely saw an improvement in Casado. But you might argue that that took too long to find. And there were a couple of improvements. There were improvements in Kukurea, but it almost took too long to find as well. So I'm concerned. I'm hearing people tell me that Maresca's not got a plan B, which concerns me because we've seen managers like De Zerbi not have a plan B and look what happens. Managers need to be able to adapt. They need to be pragmatic because ultimately their job is to win and make the club and the team successful again. And if you listen to managers like Ancelotti, only just last week, he's basically saying about how he doesn't really have a fixed style. He assesses his team and works out the best way for that team to play and get the best out of his best players. And then other people will fit in around that. That's why he played without a striker because he didn't have a best striker last season. He's very pr pragmatic. And if you look at Pep Guardiola, he's kind of changed and evolved as well. Because at Barcelona, when he was there, and Barcelona B when he was even younger, he was stuck on one way of playing football. And that was the way he wanted to play. And as he's come to Bayern Munich and Manchester City, we've seen him adapt. He realised that there were weaknesses to his game. He's added physicality to his size that were notoriously small. He's added direct passing over long distances rather than very short, intricate passes. The long pass now is something that he's added to his game because he's added physicality in there. He's ultimately realised how he needs to change his pressing a little bit. He's adapted to different leagues. And a good manager will do that 100%. So hopefully Maresca comes and learns that. But for me, and this is where I have the biggest issue, Chelsea isn't a club to come in and learn at. Chelsea is a club that you come in when you've already learned what you need to know and you take Chelsea to glory, to trophies. You're, you're judged on your results because you are as experienced and skilled as you could possibly be or need to be to manage at the top flight. And I think it's fair to say that on the evidence that we've hired Maresca, he isn't that. He just isn't. He's not had enough time and it's nothing against his character. But if he had 10 years under his belt and he's been around and he's learned and he's done all it takes to be managing at the very top level and he comes with a very good CV, I'd probably feel a bit happier. But maybe Chelsea Football Club just aren't at that level anymore. Maybe Chelsea Football Club are only appealing to championship level managers who are on the up and the upwards trajectory. But for me... I feel like Chelsea Football Club isn't a place to come and learn. And that's the biggest issue I've got with this appointment because he's going to have to learn on the job again. We saw that with Lampard. We saw that with Potter. We've even seen it with Pochettino. But back in the day, under the Abramovich ownership, we just didn't see it. We saw ready-made managers coming in, implementing styles ASAP, identifying what players could and couldn't do, how to get the best out of these teams and how to win trophies. But that all feels so far removed again. And it's another summer of uncertainty ahead of us. 
I think let's see pre-season, see how things look with Maresca, as I'm sure it's going to be announced probably now next week. And just sort of see what happens. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit confused. I'm not sure what to expect. I've done my research. I've looked at Maresca. I've looked at the style of football. I've got to be honest with you. It's going to take a lot of patience for that to be implemented at Chelsea Football Club. Because, unfortunately, the DNA of this club and the stadium and the match-going fans, they're not patient. Think about Sarri. Think about times under Pochettino this season. If the ball didn't move forwards quickly, there were boos. There were calls for you don't know what you're doing. And I feel like that could potentially happen again. And he's cut, this manager is going to be coming in with untold pressure because he's coming into a job way bigger than what his CV or anything ever suggests he should be getting. And, and that's the issue that I think a lot of Chelsea fans are going to have is that their standards are being maintained and ultimately at the moment, the direction and the performance of the club isn't hitting those standards and it's causing a rift. And the quicker Todd Bowley, Clear Lake Capital, Egg Barley, Lawrence Stewart, Paul Whit Stanley can get this team doing that, the better chance we've got as progressing as a football club. Because right now, we're going to be in limbo. And if things go wrong early doors, it's not going to be good. If things go right, which I hope they do, because I want to see Chelsea Football Club winning, then I'll sit here and say, fair play, risk well taken. We were uncertain. But you guys met him, you spoke to Maresca, you understood it, you did your research, and it worked out. So I don't want to judge him too quickly. Yes, I'm unsure. I'm uncertain about the future and what that looks like for Chelsea Football Club next season. I'm uncertain about players' futures because I'm not sure how this squad lines up, who's in where, what does Maresca see fit for this team. Hopefully he comes and has a look. Apparently, before he went to Leicester, very, very, very intricate spent hours and hours and hours looking at his players, identifying what he had and working it out to see what would benefit him most going forward into the next season. And he did that. And maybe he learned his lessons at Palmer or maybe in Palmer they weren't willing to listen. Who knows how it will turn out at Chelsea Football Club. But what I know is I want, I want to see Chelsea Football Club progressing, not moving backwards from this season and hoping that this risk pays off. Because he comes across pretty well. I've got to be honest. That's the one thing I'll say regarding him as a man is I like how he comes across. He seems like he's a winner and it seems like he's driven for success. And ultimately, he's won the championship. So it's a trophy. It's one more trophy in England than Pochettino's ever had. And that's a good start. So let's see what happens. Let's see with preseason. I'm not going to judge him too quick. Let's try and give him time, Chelsea fans. But ev if he's evidently out of his depth, then we're fair to have our views. And if he's, if he's succeeding, let's make sure we praise him and, and congratulate the board for making the right choice. It's going to be an interesting summer. I know that much. We're going to see arrivals at Stamford Bridge, which we're due to be seeing very quickly. I'll touch on it. Tosin Adebayo is probably coming in from Fulham, a very, very tall, capable centre-back previously of Manchester City's academy, has done well under Marco Silva at Fulham. He's 26 years old. He's a good age. He's on a free transfer, doesn't have to relocate. There's no stresses like that. He's got Premier League experience. And if, it, if we've lost Thiago Silva, then we need to replace the centre-back. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I can live with it. If he ends up being a starter, it's okay. But it's additional height to the team. We've replaced a five foot ten centre back with a six foot seven centre back. There's a big difference there. There really, really is. Even though I wouldn't take anything away from Thiago Silva, and I'd rather have him at my club than not. Let's see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really intrigued to see what people are thinking. I think a lot of the fan base is torn. Some people feel like this is a step backwards. Some people feel like this is a real progressive step in the style of football for Chelsea Football Club. But ultimately, do you want a good style of football or do you want results? Let me know your thoughts. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. Appreciate you all so much. Make sure to drop a like on the video. If we can get 20 likes, that would be fantastic. And I will see you very, very soon for any more Chelsea news that's breaking throughout the summer.